This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a wonderful day to be together in this time of worship, and it's my joy to welcome you into this space. If you're worshiping here in the sanctuary or over live stream, if you're joining us that way, we are glad uh, that you are present in worship. I would like to invite you to let us know that you're present here by registering your attendance. If you're worshiping online, there's a link you can place in the browser that will allow you to register that way. And here in the sanctuary, there are registration pads at the center of the sanctuary rows. And if you'll pass those down and back again, and uh, make sure that there are folks that, uh, whose faces you don't recognize to greet one another and maybe make a new friend this morning. Uh, it's always a joy to welcome our visitors, and I've had a chance to meet some of you who are visiting with us. And we would invite you, if you would like to do so, to share an email address or mailing address, a phone number, to give us the opportunity to reach out to you and share with you some of the ways that we're trying to live out God's love in the world and invite you to join us in that work. If you're a college student, we hope you'll come back at noon uh, to join in our college lunch. We have it every Sunday at noon um, during the school year, and they'll be gathering in the narthex. So if you're here in worship this morning and don't mind coming back, uh, you'll get a free lunch. We have uh, the season of Lent beginning this week, and as part of our tradition, we gather on Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, the night before Lent begins, for Pancake Supper and for Jazz Mass at 6.30, and we hope you'll come and join us for that. Then the next day is Ash Wednesday, and we will worship at noon and at 6.15, same service format, so you don't have to come to both. Uh, just pick one of those services to come to and join us um, in beginning the scent of Lee's season of Lent in the right spirit. There are more details about these events in your bulletin, so I'll draw your attention to those, including our concerts every Thursday at noon during Lent. And our bulletin will tell you each week who will be performing that Thursday, and you're welcome to come and join us for lunch and for a concert. Finally, next Sunday, uh, we are having a gathering of folks who are reading through the Bible together this year. We are doing that together as a congregation, and uh, this morning we find ourselves at the end of the Torah in the book of Deuteronomy, but we want you to come and join us. Even if you're not reading through the Bible and want to come and participate, you are more than welcome. That is next Sunday evening from 5 to 7. We ask that you RSVP, the information's in the bulletin, and we're going to try a good old-fashioned potluck, so we hope you'll join us for that as well. This morning, as we open the book of Deuteronomy, we hear the great commandment to love God with our whole heart, with our soul, and with our strength. So may our worship today be one way that we express that love for God.
heaven, Lord, and hear our prayers. Gather us in, Lord, and heal our spirits. Gather us in, Lord, and open our hearts to receive your word. Trusting that God's love for us is unconditional and God's mercy is everlasting, let us make our confessions with the confidence of children of God. O oh God, in these perplexing days, we confess that we are tempted to give up and turn away from the path you would have us go. Forgive us, we pray. We ask that you would increase our faith, that you would enlarge our capacity to forgive, that you would guide our stumbling feet in the way that leads to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, O oh God, we offer you our individual confessions in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us exchange signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray together the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A lesson from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 12 and 20 to 25. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to you, a land with fine, large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. When your children ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of the decrees and the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your children, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord displayed before our eyes great and awesome signs and wonders against Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his household. He brought us out from there in order to bring us in to give us the land that he promised on oath to our ancestors. Then the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, 
to fill the Lord to fear the Lord our God for our lasting good so as to keep us alive as is now the case if we diligently observe this entire commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us we will be in the right the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God like to spend a little time with our children this morning. So if you're here in the sanctuary and want to come forward and sit down with me, that would be great. And if you're worshiping online, just move a little closer to your screens and we'll have a few minutes together. Come on down. Glad to see everybody this morning. Good morning. A nice big group. I bet some of you have a holiday from school on Monday. So I'm glad you're here. Good morning. Well, Miss Mary just read for us a part of the Bible from a book that has a funny name. It's called the Book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. It's kind of a long word, isn't it? And it's Moses talking to the people kind of his last chance to talk to them and tell them what's really, really important. And he says, there's something really, really important that I want you to remember. I want you never to forget. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And he says, keep these words in your heart. So one of the things that helps us keep words in our heart is to memorize them. If we can memorize them, then we can say them whenever we want to, and they can remind us of what's important. So I want to work with you to help us all memorize these words, and then we'll talk about them for just a second. So hand motions help me. So here we go. Love the Lord your God. That's the first part. Let's say it together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your heart. And with all your soul, with all your soul, and with all your strength, with all your strength. So let's say it all together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And we can say that and learn it and repeat it because it reminds us that the most important thing to God is love. God loves us unconditionally. We talk about that a lot. But it's also important to remember that we are supposed to love God back. So let's do everything we can to show our love for God with all our heart, with all our souls, and with all our strength. Let's pray together. God of love, we thank you so much for loving us. You love us no matter what. You always have and you always will. Help us to love you back. Help us to put you first. Help us to do everything we can in our lives to show our love for you and our love for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you're three, four, or five, you can go to Children's Church with Pastor Chris and Pastor Maggie, and the rest of you can return to your seats with family. So on January 8th, we began our journey through the Bible as a congregation. We are going to be making our way on Sundays during worship through the various books of the Bible. We've been in Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers, and this morning we are in Deuteronomy. We're going to take a little break during the season of Lent and spend some time with Jesus in the Gospel of John, but then we'll pick right back up with Joshua, Judges, and so forth. And one of the things I shared with you on that first Sunday that we began the journey was that we're going to be seeing some themes along the way. I talked in that sermon about how in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve hid themselves from God, and how throughout the scriptures we'll see people who step out and say to God, here I am, 
who come out of hiding and, and show themselves just as they are to God. Well, this morning, we come to the central theme of all the scriptures, a theme that recurs again and again and again and again, that sits at the foundation of our relationship with God. And if we learn nothing else through our study of the scriptures, if we learn nothing else from our participation in a community of faith, this is the one thing. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Jesus was asked one day when he was teaching, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus was a faithful Jew. He knew all 600 plus laws that are laid out in the Torah. But his response was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, he added, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He took this verse from Deuteronomy and a verse from Leviticus and put them together. Because you can't have one without the other, Jesus said. We hear that all through the scriptures as well. We, see, we hear the voices of the prophets saying, you bring me your sacrifices in the temple. You say that you love me, but how can I accept your worship, says the Lord, if you turn your back on the poor, on the widows, the orphans, and the immigrants? Love of God connected with love of neighbor. And then we hear it all the way, almost to the end of the scriptures in the letter of 1 John, when he says, God is love. But how can you say you love God whom you have not seen if you do not love your neighbor whom you have seen? So again and again, we're going to be seeing this theme of loving God and loving neighbor. The founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, said, this is what salvation is. A journey of growing ever deeper in love with God and love of neighbor until we reach that point when we are perfect in love, when our love is complete, where no one is left out. Now, I don't know if anyone ever reaches that point of perfection, maybe momentarily, but we're all reaching for it. We're all on a journey toward it. And so these verses we've heard from Deuteronomy are one of the anchor pieces of our faith. So what's going on in Deuteronomy? Who says these words, and, and who's he talking to, and why? Well, Deuteronomy is structured as if it is Moses' final speech to the people. They are just about ready to cross into the promised land. This is the second generation of Israelites. If you remember, the first generation proved themselves too scared to enter the promised land. So they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and now this next generation is about to step into it. But Moses cannot go with them. That's part of the story. So here he is giving his final words to the people before his own death and before they march into the promised land. And so he sums up many things in these speeches. He recounts their history together and how God delivered them from slavery in Egypt. He recounts many of the laws. And then we come to the Ten Commandments, the second time the Ten Commandments appear in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 5. This is the heart of the law, these commandments. And then we get to chapter 6. And as far as I've read, as far as I've researched, I think this is the first time that this commandment is given. Love the Lord your God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. God alone, God above all else. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Revealing to the people that the relationship with God is is less about obedience, although it is about obedience. And it's less about fear as it is about love. That God has created this particular people to be in a relationship of love with God. That God wants us to be in love with God. To walk and talk and commune with God and even argue with God. To be in that kind of trusting relationship that grows ever deeper. 
As I've pondered that this week, I've thought, do I love God? I want to do what God wants me to do. I think about God. I work on my theology. I write papers about God. I, I preach about God. But do I love God? Do I hunger and thirst for time with God? There's an invitation there for me and I think for all of us. Do you, do you love God first and foremost? And if so, how do you express that love? How do you live out that love? Well, here in Deuteronomy, Moses is giving the people some very real, tangible ways to grow deeper in love with God. And I want to dig into these verses a little bit, knowing that we're focusing less on the love your neighbor as yourself part of it, but we'll get to that on another day. But how is Moses instructing the people to grow in love with God? He says, as I said to the children, keep these words in your heart. Maybe it's worth all of us memorizing them, saying them when we are brushing our teeth or sitting in a traffic stop or saying them first thing when we wake up in the morning and last thing as we go to bed at night. Keep them in our hearts. Ponder them over and over and over again. And then Moses says, bind them on your hands. Isn't that interesting? What if we were to consider every way that we use our hands throughout the day? And if we were to offer every use of our hands to the worship of God as an expression of our love for God and our trust in God. So every email we send, every comment on Facebook, every text we type, how we cook for others, how we serve others, every handshake, every sale we make, how we direct the choir, is all of that done as an offering of love to God, as part of our relationship with God? As we drive down West End trying to get to 440, there's an invitation to look at our hands and say, love the Lord your God with all your strength. So he moves from that and says, Make them as an emblem on your forehead. Now, there have been many Jews across the centuries who have taken this teaching very literally and actually wear what's called a phylactery, a little box that has within it a piece of parchment with Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Right here, every day. Now, there are all sorts of ways to interpret that, but one of the things that makes me think of is how do, how do I use my mind? How are my thoughts guarded and shaped by my love for God? Now, brain scientists will tell us that our brains just shoot thoughts off all the time. That's what they do. That's how brains work. And when we sleep in our dreams, our brains are trying to make sense of some of our experiences. So it's been liberating to know that that you are not your thoughts. But what if we had this filter of love for God that would help us with our thoughts and our thinking? So when our thoughts begin to tell us things like, you're not enough, you're not worthy, or those people are fill in the blank, we can notice those thoughts through the filter of God's unconditional love. Write them on your hands, have them as an emblem on your forehead, post them on your doorposts. Again, many of our Jewish friends have this practice. Have any of you ever seen a mezuzah? Rob Riley brought one to Bible study on Tuesday morning. He and Laura live in a neighborhood where there were many Jewish folks who moved in to that neighborhood early on because they could walk to the synagogue. Because driving in their theology is work. And so to live close enough to the synagogue to walk. And Rob found on the lintel of one of the doors a mezuzah, which is a little 
box about this big, and in it is the parchment written in Hebrew with Deuteronomy 6, 4. And to me, that's a reminder that whether you're going out or coming in, and these threshold places in our lives, our lives are grounded in love of God and love of neighbor. A reminder as I'm going out into the world that I'm going out in the name and in the spirit of God's love. And as I'm coming home to be with whoever's in my home, whether it's myself, my family, this is a home dedicated to the love of God and growing in deeper love with God. Which brings me to the last instruction that Moses gives as part of this. And he says it again and again throughout these verses. Teach these words to your children. Pass them down to the next generation. And of course, that is a word for those of us who are parents. How do we, in our relationships with our children, in our homes, how do we cultivate love for God? How do we help our children learn that God is love and that in God's eyes they are beautiful and worthy? Now, my kids are 18 and 21. And somewhere along the way, 13 or 14, I realized that what I was saying was just wah, 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 wah. So what becomes more important is what I do. Because they're still watching. So am I behaving and acting in ways that I'm okay exposing to God? Am I acting in ways that are consistent with God's love and God's instruction? But this goes beyond just for those who are parents teaching children. How do we as a congregation show our children God's love and teach them the scriptures and the love of God and love of neighbor? When we have a baptism and we bring a child to the center of the church, we all make a promise that we're going to do everything we can to help this child know that they are loved by God and to give them opportunities to grow in that love and serve others. So maybe there's an invitation, if you don't have children at home, to learn the names of the children. We have some folks in our church who put there's these children's names on their refrigerator and pray for them regularly. How do we do that as a congregation? And even more so, how do we do this beyond the walls of our church? And the children of the community... What are we doing as a church to, to help the children in our community, especially the ones who are forgotten, the ones caught up in our foster system, the ones who have no one at home? How do we help raise them up in the love of God? These are huge questions worth asking, but not enough time to explore them in this moment. But here we have these words of Moses, saying that when it comes down to it, it's all about love. On Wednesday night, I went to a Bible study at First United Methodist Church in Lebanon. It was hosted by our bishop. It was a district Bible study. Many of you know that our bishop was in a terrible car accident at the end of August, and he had multiple surgeries, and he finally returned to work in January. And so he's making his way around all of the districts to reconnect and uh, to, to hear from people. He was focusing on a couple of chapters in John's gospel that was talking about abiding in God's love. But he asked this question, and I think it relates well to what we're looking at today. Think in your mind of someone who you see as a mature Christian or someone with spiritual maturity. Is it because they know scripture really well? Is it because they have good and appropriate theology? Is it because they're in church every Sunday? Is it because of... No, it's none of those things. What it comes down to is this person loves well. Moses said it. The prophet said it. Jesus said it. Jesus' followers have continued to say it. And may we continue to live it. Love. That's what it's all about.
Would you rise in body or in spirit and join me as we affirm our faith together, number 883 in your hymnals. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our prayer time this morning, I invite you to lift up both your silent and your spoken prayers. If you'd like to share them with the pastoral team to pray throughout the week, please follow the link under Contact Us on our website. Or if you're here in the sanctuary, you can fill out a gray card located in the pew racks in front of you, and you can place those in the offering plates as they're passed in a few moments. This morning, we celebrate the birth of Grace Eleanor Culver, who was born on February 9th in Washington, D.C., to David and Mary Morgan Limparis Culver. She's welcomed also by her aunt, Emily Culver Bigelow, cousins, Anna and Peter Bigelow, and grandparents, Jim and Nancy Niece Culver. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Steadfast and loving God, we praise you this morning for your faithfulness in all generations. For the saints of the faith who told your story over and over again so that we might inherit the gifts of your kingdom. We give you thanks for life and love, for companionship and community. We give you thanks too that we get to bear witness to your goodness and love in the world, at home and at school, at work and at play. We pray this day for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, and we ask that you would grant them healing. We lift up to you those who are grieving. We lift up those who are anxious about the future. Comfort them, O oh God, and give them your peace. We pray for those who struggle with their faith, for those who doubt, and for those who have forgotten your story and their place in it. Grant them your grace and the assurance that despite their struggle, your love is unconditional and unfading. We pray for those whose lives are at risk this day, for those who do not have enough to eat or do not have adequate shelter, for those whose homes are places of violence rather than safety. We continue to remember the people of Turkey and Syria whose lives and livelihoods have been destroyed by the earthquake there. God of grace, grant to each of these your provision for each day and empower all of us to work for the flourishing of all people. O oh God, may your word be ever before us and always within our hearts. Help us to love you as deeply and as faithfully as you have loved us. And help us to share your love wherever we may go. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, the one who loved us and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and in praise. Those of you joining us online are invited to give via the options listed on the screen or in the chat. And here in the sanctuary, we'll pass the offering plates down the pews. May we give with joy this morning to the God who has been so generous with us.
good old Charles Wesley putting into words the journey of love, the beginning and the end of faith. May we go now to continue our journey, growing ever deeper in love with God and neighbor, singing the praises of God with our lives, hands, heart, and feet. Go in that love. Amen. <laughs>